have a good time. We're going to have a good time. Ready? Acts chapter 2, um, verse, verse 1. We're going to start at verse 1. And uh, listen, I need y'all, I need y'all to be ready for this. I need you to jump in. I need you to participate. Uh, I, if, you, if something jumps out at you, I want you to put it on the screen, all right? Uh, if you, if, if you uh, uh, feel like saying amen, say amen and, and give us some hearts and give us some thumbs, all right? Let's go. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all of these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hear them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene. Listen to this. Visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts uh, to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs or Arabs. Um, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, listen to this, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've had too much wine. Listen to what Peter does. Peter stands up. The Bible says, then Peter stood up, verse 14, with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Listen to what he says. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. <laughs> no, this is what was spoken, hallelujah, by the prophet Joel. That in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy my goodness I wish somebody would just put that on the screen prophesy and they will prophesy I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and billows of smoke the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. <laughs> what a wonderful, wonderful passage of scripture. Hallelujah. So today I want to, I want to talk uh, to you and I want to share, uh, um, I guess from this subject, I want to share and talk about uh, divine disruptions. Divine disruptions. Uh, and if uh, you want to to uh, call this something else, we can uh, speak, we can call it the prophetic Pentecost. The prophetic Pentecost, all right? Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for all that we have uh, uh, seen and all that our eyes have witnessed and all that we have experienced so far. 
We ask, Lord, that you would speak to us now. Spirit of grace, spirit of truth, spirit of wisdom, be released in our house, in our midst, in our homes, in the name of Jesus. Revelation, experience, power, freshness, and life be released on us today. Let the Zoe of God be our portion in the name of Jesus. And we give you great praise that it is done by faith. Use me now to be an instrument of revelation and knowledge and power, influence and impact in the life of your people. Thank you that this word is relevant to the seasons that are in on this live, in this room, in this moment. We give you glory for it now in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. A divine disruption or the prophetic Pentecost. All right. Y'all ready? Let's, let's get into this. Let's get into this. So, so we, we started out, we started out by talking about, uh, or we left off, let me say that, we left off on Wednesday night talking about uh, the Holy Spirit and the power of the Holy Spirit, but we left off with the understanding of Pentecost and I want to just kind of refresh you uh, as we get into our conversation about uh, Holy Spirit and Pentecost and how all of this works. Let's look at this. Um, uh, one of the things that we discovered as we look at the text, the first verse says, on the day of Pentecost, uh, uh, or when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And so what we discovered, let's be reminded that what we discovered was that this particular moment in Acts chapter 2 was the day of Pentecost. And the day of Pentecost happened 50 days after Easter, or what we know as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 50 days from Easter was the day of Pentecost. It was the day, but it was Pentecost was, this was the day that the feast of Pentecost would begin, all right? It is also known as um, uh, Shavuot or Shavat, all right? Uh, uh, it, is the, the, uh, 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 it is the time where the, the wheat is harvested, okay? And so this was to be the day of uh, the start of Pentecost. Now, uh, a lot of us, we, we got so excited about the day until we, for, we had forsaken the fact that it, Pentecost is not just a day, but that it is literally a season, all right? Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. Remember that. Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. And that's the first thing that we were reminded of, that Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. Uh, what we see in Acts chapter 2, we see the day of Pentecost, but it was the initiation it was the start of a season. It was the end of one season and the beginning of a new season. All right? Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. In fact, it is the longest season of the Christian calendar, uh, the Christian church. It is our longest season. It lasts anywhere from 22 to 27 weeks, depending upon when Easter comes. All right. So it's the longest feast. It's the longest celebration. It's the longest season of the church. And it lasts all the way up into Advent. Right. So we learn again that Pentecost is not just a day. It is a season. Now, why is that worth mentioning? Because one can be encouraged to understand that God uh, God's 
perspective is a holistic perspective in that he does not just move in days, but he moves in seasons. And what I want us to be clear about is that when you see, my goodness, when you see in Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, literally, it is the start of something brand new. We know it is the birthing of the church. It is the birthing of the church, and it is the start of the church. Now, there are some things here. We're going we're gonna to kind of jump between uh, uh, Acts chapter 1 and chapter 2. All right? Now, I want to show you something that I think is really significant to note, um, and we're going to talk about how prophetic Pentecost really is and how prophetic uh, it, it really is right now. now. Now, a few weeks ago, we, we celebrated uh, Pentecost. We celebrated the day of Pentecost, right? But it took us into a season. Now, I want you to understand that we are now in a new season. We are in the season of Pentecost, and I need y'all, I, I need y'all to get ready to shout for a minute. I want you to tell your cyber neighbor, I'm in a new season. I want you to put that on the screen. I'm in a new season. Put it on the screen. I'm in a new season. And it's going to be significant for you to understand this in a moment. I'm in a new season. Come on, put it, put it on the screen. I'm in a new season. I feel like shouting already. I'm in a new season. Come on, put it up. Hallelujah. I'm in a new season. It's not just a day. It's not just a moment, but it's a season. Do you hear me? It's not just a day. Pentecost is not just a day. I, it's not something I experience once. I'm in a season. Glory to God. I'm in a season. All right. Let's go. Let's go. I see you. I'm in a new season. I see you. All right, black black women in power. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come with me. I'm in a I'm in a new season. I'm in a new season. Yes. I'm in a new season. Now, now, I didn't ask you how you feel. I didn't ask you how you feel. I didn't ask you what you're afraid of. I asked you to make a declaration that you are in a new season. All right? Here's an interesting fact. Even if they didn't feel anything on the day of Pentecost, it was still the day of Pentecost. Y'all don't want to have church. My God. Even if they never felt anything, it was still the day of Pentecost. So, so, so the season is not about how you feel. The season is about what you know. All right, let's keep going because I got somewhere to go. I got somewhere to go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right. So, so on the day of Pentecost, they're all in one place. Now, here, here's, here's something I want you to see. Here, here's, here's, here's the prophetic piece of this. Now, they are, they are in the upper room. Jesus tells them, go to Jerusalem and tarry there, right? Isn't that what he said? He said, go to Jerusalem and wait there for the promise. He tells them to go to Jerusalem and wait for the promise. Now, we know, uh, if you look in, in, in Acts chapter 1, verse 15, according to Acts chapter 1, verse 15, it's 120 of them. It is 120 of them in this room. Lord, keep me calm enough to get this out. It's 120 of them in the room. Ready? Let's investigate what the number 120 means. Y'all ready? Oh, I hope y'all ready for this. I'm ready to shout. I'm so ready. I'm so ready. Let's investigate what 120 means in the Bible. In order to understand the meaning or definition of something, it is, is one, one of the scholar principles 
that if you want to know the definition of something, you have to go to first mention. You have to go to where it is mentioned first in the Bible. And so the first place we see the number 120 is in Genesis chapter 6. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Pay attention, pay attention. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. I'm going I'm to read it one more time. I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to see if you can, you can hear the meaning in this. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always dry, strive with man, for that he also is flesh. You missed it. Yet his days shall be an hundred and twenty years. That's Genesis 6 and 3. So from first mention, we can gather that the number 120 represents the end of all flesh. It represents the end of all flesh. I hope y'all ready to shout with me. The number 120 represents the end of all flesh. Now let's get some proof in here. You can find 120 and the principle all over the Bible. Moses dies at the age of 120, the end of all flesh, all right? Uh, 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 then you, you the, well, th there's so many I could bring, but I, I, don't, I don't have time. I, I, wanna, I wanna bring uh, two more. I wanna bring two more so that we can understand this. If you go, watch this, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter five, verses 12 and 13, you see uh, Levites and singers, and you see all of the worshipers in the temple, and the Bible said, with the Levites and the singers, it was 120 priests, oh God, it was 120 priests with trumpets. And as they begin to worship, I need y'all to see this. As they begin to worship, the Bible says that the glory of the Lord filled that house. A cloud of glory filled that house, even so that the priest could not stand to minister. It was a hundred and twenty priests with trumpets. Man, if I can ever get some preachers to pick up your trumpet, y'all don't want to have church. If I can ever get a preacher to pick up a trumpet, the devil's kingdom is in trouble. <clears throat> 120 preachers, 120 priests had trumpets, and they along with the musicians and the singers they along with them begin to worship God and sing, uh, for he is good. His mercy endured forever. Then the house was filled with a cloud. I need y'all to see how prophetic this is. The house was filled with the cloud. It was 120 priests there. And they were united in worship and praise. And the glory filled the house. Now, if you jump back to Acts chapter 2, there's 120 people in the upper room. Oh, man, y'all don't want to have church. There's 120 people in the upper room. And as there are 120 people in the upper room, the Bible says, just like in Chronicles, doesn't that sound familiar? Just like in uh, uh, 2 Chronicles 5, you see the glory dropping as a result of, of my goodness those 120 unifying with those that worship come on here 120 is the end of all flesh 
And can I tell you something? Where flesh ends, glory begins. Y'all don't want to have church. I said where flesh ends, glory begins. When you see, when you see people coming out of their flesh, and getting into the spirit, come on, then you will see the glory of God be released. What you see in Acts chapter 2 is a promise of the release of the glory of God in the house of God. 120. Y'all here? Y'all shouting with me? Y'all shouting with me? All right. All right. All right. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. I, 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 want, you to, I want you to tell somebody, tell somebody, get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. If you, if you want to see glory, if you want the glory to come back, you're going to have to get out of your flesh. Okay, all right. Y'all done got quiet on me. Y'all done got quiet. Y'all done got quiet. I'm going to say it again. If you want, listen to me carefully. If you want to see the glory manifested in your life, you're going to have to come out of your flesh. Remember what God tells Moses in Exodus 3, uh, 33, rather? Uh, God tells Moses in Exodus 33, no man can see my flesh and can see my glory and live. He says, no man or no flesh can see my glory and live. No man can see my glory and live. If we are going to experience the glory of the latter house, the flesh is going to have to take a seat. Oh my goodness, I'm trying to preach in here. I said the flesh is going to have to take a seat. Because where the flesh ends, glory begins. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. My 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 grandmother, she would say it like this, get out, of your, get out of your flush. Get out of your flush. Come on out. Come on out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Huh? Get out of your flesh. Talk to your neighbor and tell them, get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. Get out of your flesh. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going before I get in trouble. Get out of your flesh. <laughs> I like that, Frida. Frida. Frida put her own name. She said, Frida, get out of your flesh. <laughs> ah, now, that's, that's good. Don't just tell your neighbor, tell yourself, get out of your flesh. Come on, when you want to do it your way, get out of your flesh. Come on, when you want to choke them out, get out of your, okay, all right. All right, let's keep going. Let's keep going. So it's 120 of them. Right? It's 120 of them. And watch this. They are gathered in obedience and anticipation of the promise. Right? They are gathered in obedience and anticipation of the promise. That'll preach right there by itself. If I learn how to be obedient, I can anticipate. All right, anyway. They're gathered in obedience and anticipation of a promise. Watch this. They know who to expect, but not what to expect. Y'all gonna let me preach today? They know who to expect, but not what to expect. They know because Jesus tells them in John 14, that I'm going away, but the comforter will come. So they know who's coming. They just don't know what to expect when he comes. Have you ever been in that place? My goodness. You ever been in that place where you didn't know what to expect? You didn't know what or how it was going to work out? Some of y'all are in that place right now. You know that God is working for you. You just don't know how he's going to do it. You know, you know because you know his heart and you know his character and you know that his desire is to see you prosper. And so you know he's working something in your favor, but you just don't know what he's going to do. I know he's going to do it. I just don't know how he's going to do it. I know he's going to make the way. I just don't know how he's going to make the way. 
But the, 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 the underlining theme is that there is anticipation and there is expectation. All right? There is anticipation and there is expectation. I don't know for I don't know about anybody else, but if I if I can if I can have a spiritual enough eye, if your eye can be spiritual enough, enough to see that something is happening in the spirit, that something is happening in this atmosphere and in the earth. And it is, it is for those who are spiritual, you are in expectation of God's glory to be seen in a way that it has never been seen. My goodness. My goodness. Y'all ready? All right. So, so they, they don't know what to expect. So they're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. I'm waiting because he told me to wait. I'm in the place he told me to go to. I'm with the people he told me to be with. And I'm doing what he said. I'm waiting on the promise. 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 Let me set y'all up real good. I'm waiting on the promise. Why don't you put that on the screen? I'm waiting on the promise. I just want to set you up real good. I'm waiting on the promise. Man, my time is running. I'm waiting on the promise. I'm waiting on the promise. Come on, put it up. I'm waiting on the promise. I'm waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Put it up. I'm waiting on the promise. I'm waiting on the promise. Come on, you're just like them. You're just like that 120. You're waiting on the promise. Just like that 120, you're waiting on the promise. Yeah, I'm waiting on the promise. I see you. I see you. I see you waiting on the promise. I'm waiting on the promise. I see you, Denise. I'm waiting on the promise. Come on. Come on here. Come on. Speak it. Speak it. I'm waiting on the promise. Come on. Be obedient. Be obedient. I'm waiting on. I see you. I see you. I'm waiting on the promise. 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 Yeah, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And sometimes this is what we do while we're waiting. We have to continue to uh, reaffirm that. We have to continue uh, to confess that I'm waiting on the promise, right? And so while we're doing that, while we're waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. And all of a sudden, look at what happens in the scripture. The Bible says they are waiting and suddenly, oh my God. And suddenly, their weight is disrupted. Okay, all right. Let me prophesy this to you. For those that are waiting, there's about to be disruption in your weight. Oh, my God. There's about to be disruption in your weight. Now, let's talk about this for a moment. The Bible says, and suddenly a sound came from heaven. And suddenly, and suddenly, there was a sudden disruption to their weight. Now, let's talk about disruption. Because when I, when I look at the word disruption or to disrupt, the word disrupt means to, uh, 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 it, is, it is a disturbance. To disrupt means to disturb. To disrupt means to disturb. To disturb. But it also means to interrupt. All right? Now, to disturb or disruption and interruption are, are synonymous with each other. But there is something significant about interruption that I want you to see. Glory to God. To disrupt means to disturb. But to interrupt means, watch this, to, to stop the, continu the continuation. To stop continuation. To interrupt means to stop continuation. To disrupt, Lord God, means to bring a disturbance. And a disturbance will cause an interruption. A dis an interruption 
is a stopping of continuation. Y'all ain't here. I'm going to try it again. The Bible said, and suddenly a sound from heaven came uh, and filled the house where they were sitting. In other words, it disrupted their waiting session. It interrupted their waiting session. And I don't know who this word is for today. I want to tell you, I want you to understand that God is disrupting your wait. God is bringing a divine disruption. I need you to hear me prophetically. Why is this Pentecost prophetic? Because uh, in this particular season of Pentecost, we have seen disruption, but we have not had discernment enough to know that disrupt this disruption is divine. Did you hear me? I said this disruption is divine. This disruption is divine. Glory to God. God said, I had to send this disruption, glory to God, because I had to stop the continuation, the cycle of things. And what I want you to understand is what God is doing in this season of Pentecost is he is disrupting and discontinuing. He is breaking and destroying cycles. I want you, I want you to put this on the screen. Glory to God. The cycle is broken. The cycle is broken. Come on, put it up. The cycle is broken. To disturb means to, uh, uh, to disrupt means to disturb. And the reason I sent a disturbance was because I was trying to break the cycle. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I want to tell you that you need to rejoice at the disruption. Because the disruption is a sign that the cycle is being broken. Woo! Hallelujah. I said the cycle is being broken broken. Y'all don't want to have church with me. I, I need some help. I need somebody to hold me out and put it on the screen. The cycle is broken. Come on. That's it. The cycle is broken. Come on. Mm -hmm. The cycle is broken. The cycle is broken. So, so, so what we're seeing here in this, what we're seeing in Acts chapter 2, we're seeing literally God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, break cycles. Where do cycles happen? Where do cycles happen at? Cycles, uh, cycles happen when we develop cultural influences. Cycles happen as a result of cultural influences. When we look in different kinds of cultures, you see certain things and traditions certain traditions that happen as a result of culture. You're raised certain ways. And so because you are raised certain ways, there's certain uh, things that you do. And what you don't realize is that a lot of the times those traditions become cycles in your life. And those cycles, watch this, those cycles have the ability to stifle and, and stagnate your progress and your process and purpose in the kingdom of God. And so if you do not have, watch this, the Holy Spirit living in your life, I guarantee you there are some unhealthy cycles that are still at work in your life. Y'all want me to preach or y'all want me to preach? I'm going to try it again. If the Holy Spirit is not working in your life, there is a guarantee, 99.9% .9 of the time, that there is a cycle that needs to be broken in your life. <sighs> okay. I done messed up, y'all. Okay, here we go. Y'all ready? Ready? The cycle is broken. So what we're seeing here, the Bible says, their weight is interrupted. Their weight is interrupted and there's this loud noise that comes into the room. There's this loud noise 
and and the the presence of God, the spirit of God fills the room. But not only does it fill the room, it fills them. And as it fills them, the Bible says they begin to speak in tongues as the spirit gives them utterance. As the spirit enables them, they begin to speak in tongues. And then those that are uh, around, there are neighboring, uh, 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 in the neighboring community, there are those that are around that are listening to this. They are witnessing that these people are Galileans and they are speaking their language. The Bible says everybody heard them in their own language. And so what we see now is a disruption here that has been ordained by God. Can I tell you again that God uses disruption? And he's using every disruption in your life today. Some of y'all need to praise God that he disrupted and interrupted things in your life. Some of you would have still been in broken relationships if he hadn't disrupted. Okay, anyway, let me keep going. Um, be encouraged. So now what we see, what we see here, we see that God uses this disruption. He uses this disruption. He interrupts their weight. He disrupts their weight and this disruption, uh, number one, is used to release the divine, right? This disruption is used to release the divine. Uh, it is to give them, watch this, to give them access to the presence of God, right? Remember, Jesus tells them in John 14, he tells them, watch it, he says, I've got to go. I'm with you right now in physical form but I've got to leave so that I can be with you I can remain with you in spiritual form so so I don't want to just walk alongside you I want to live in you oh. so he comes he, he, he causes disruption watch it remember now Jesus was born in disruption he disrupts the social and civil unrest, right? And then as he prepares to make his exit physically, he sends another disruption, glory to God. He sends another disruption by way of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit now comes uh, to disrupt and this disruption will release the divine. This disruption releases the divine. It releases the spirit of God. Hallelujah. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right. And we beheld his glory. Come on. John 1. We beheld his glory. The only begotten of the father full of grace and truth. He was the word made flesh. Right. He was the, the tangible, the, the touchable word. Right. He said, but now I, I'm going to leave and I'm going to take it a little bit further and I'm going to release the divine in a way that you don't just, it's not just tangible in your hand, but it's now tangible in your spirit. You got to put this on the screen. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Because if the Holy Ghost had not come, I would not have received the divine. What is the divine? I would not have received that which came from God. Watch this. Watch this. Now the Holy Spirit, we know that the Holy Spirit has been around. I'm almost done. Holy Spirit has been around uh, uh, since the beginning of time, right? He's been around since the beginning of time. Uh, God said, and let us make man in our own likeness and in our, listen to me, uh, in our image, right? Whenever you see him saying us, come on, you see uh, the divine council of glory, right? You see the executive council of glory there. And, and so now you see, you see him uh, uh, in, in Genesis 11, he says, let us go down and confound their language, right? <laughs> So, so you see, you see the Holy Spirit the entire time and, and, the, uh, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Uh, the Spirit of God moved or hovered or danced. Uh, that is the Holy Spirit who, who does the dance. Come on. And, and so Holy Spirit has been around, right? And as you continue to look in the Old Testament, you see uh, 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 Samson and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. That was the Holy Spirit, right? 
and the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul and he began to prophesy and the spirit of the Lord came upon Elijah and uh, Elisha right and the spirit of God uh, so so the Holy Spirit rested on them but in the New Testament in Acts chapter 2 he says I'm not just going to be on you I'm ready to live in you in other words, I'm not just going to empower you to perform. I'm going to, I'm going to live in you so that you have the ability to accomplish, to live, to live this thing out, to walk this thing out. All right. So he, he comes to reveal the divine. He comes to reveal the divine. All right. Let's, 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 let's ask some questions here. When you talk about what happens here, he, he releases rather the divine. He releases the divine. As he releases the divine, uh, that is the Holy Spirit. He releases himself into the earth to enter into the saints of God, right? Now watch this. Watch this, y'all. This, this is going to bless you. Watch this. Holy Spirit comes, and as a result of the Holy Spirit coming, the Bible says they begin to speak in tongues, right? Everybody heard their language. They were enabled. Uh, they, they received a language, Right? They received the ability uh, to speak in languages that they had not learned. Um, uh, but I want to show you something that's really, really powerful. It was not just the language that makes this so powerful. It is the very presence that makes this so powerful because with the presence of God comes manifestations. All right. Some of the manifestations. This was this was a manifestation that we saw in action in, in, in chapter two. They began to speak in tongues. Now, we, we uh, discovered in uh, First Corinthians 12, we discovered the gifts of the spirit. Right. We discovered the the speaking gifts or the power gifts and the knowing gifts. Uh, and and we, we learned about the the the. Uh, the gift of faith, uh, the, the, the working of miracles, all right? We learned about the gift of prophecy. We learned about uh, 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 the gift of tongues. Uh, we learned also about the, the interpretation of tongues. But we also learned about discernment. We learned about discernment. You ready? We learned about discernment, uh, the, the, the discerning of spirits. And this, this is something that I want us to understand that when the Holy Spirit entered into us, entered into the earth and entered into uh, 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 mankind, this was one of the gifts that was given uh, to mankind, the gift of discernment. But the interesting thing is, it is relative to your ability to be disciplined enough, come on, to spend time in the presence of God. I often give this example that those who work in banks, when you work in a bank, they don't give you fake money. They give you real money, real currency. Why? Because if you spend enough time with the real currency, you will be able to identify the fake currency. So what has to happen is we have to spend enough time with that which is authentic. So he releases the, the divine and that which is authentic. And it is our responsibility to spend time in the presence of God, to spend time with God. Come on. So that we know the authentic presence of God. And as you stay in the presence of God, he begins to mature you. Watch this. And, and as the old saints say, he begins to sharpen your gift of discernment. The word discernment means to distinguish. It means to, to know. It means uh, uh, to, to understand. All right. It is, it is to, to understand. The word uh, 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 to distinguish, uh, or, or discerning rather, means to, to understand 
difference, to uh, be able to discern, to be able to know, um, and not only just know, but to be able to anticipate. Now, why am I spending so much time on all of these things? Because I want you to understand something. I dropped my towel, y'all. <laughs> I want you to understand something. Listen to this. Discernment is important. And specifically for the season that we're in now. Okay? It is, it is important for the season that we are in. If you're going to be successful in this season, where we are, you're going to have to know, you, let me say it like this, you're going to have to, you're going to have to have understanding about disruptions. You're going to have to have understanding about the disruptions. We are literally in disruption right now. We're living in a season of disruption. Your life has been disrupted. Uh, uh, we, we can't worship together. Come on. We can't love on our, our loved ones. We can't hug our loved ones. We can't go and congregate at, at the houses. We can't do all of that. Our lives have been disrupted. We have to work from home. We have to worship from home. We have to do everything from home. And so we are in disruption. And in the midst of that disruption, there's also a revealing. There's another disruption. Come on. There's another disruption, another pandemic, systemic racism. Come on. It's being exposed. All of this is happening. It's being exposed. It's being exposed right now. And, and what we gotta, we've got to, watch this, we've got to be yielded to the Holy Spirit so that discernment is working. Because now I'm going to have to know how, watch this, I'm going to have to know how to discern what moves to make. The Bible says, that the sons of Issachar were discerning of the times and knew what to do. You've got to know the times that we're living in. You've got to know the time that we're living in. Please understand me. The time that we are living in right now, hallelujah, the time that we are living in, we need the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is going to reveal, watch this, not only what's happening, listen to me carefully, not only is the, is the Holy Ghost going to reveal what's happening, listen to me, he's going to reveal the strategy. He's going to reveal what's happening and give you the strategy, where to turn what to do, what to hold on to. I need y'all to hear me prophetically. This Pentecost is prophetic. These things are happening and the Holy Ghost is trying to reveal to you what you need to do, watch this, with your body, with your finance, with your mental capacity. Y'all better hear me today, and I'm ended. I'm just, I'm not through. I'm just going to quit. He's revealing, watch this, what not to spend on. And if you're not yielded, watch this. If you're, if you're not yielded to the Holy Ghost, listen to me carefully. If you're not yielded to the Holy Ghost, you're going to spend what you need to hold on to. The Holy Ghost will give you a strategy, watch this, to have favor in famine. So for those, watch this, for those, listen to me, it's not too late, it's not too late. For those, those who have, uh, uh, um, those who have the Holy Ghost, those who have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of you, I want you to understand. 
Did you hear me today? I want you to understand. You got a place to rejoice. You need to rejoice. But you need to make sure you yield, though. You need to make sure, make sure you yield. Make sure you submit. Make sure you yield. Make sure you yield. 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 Because your yielding, your willingness to obey will result in victorious living. I promise you, your obedience will release the supernatural in an unprecedented way. We are about to see the end of flesh and the beginning of the glory of God. Come on, if you read, hey guy, said the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former. Do y'all understand that? That's why this Pentecost is prophetic because it reveals <laughs> that glory is on the way. I got to stop. I got to stop. I ain't through the clock on the wall. Come on here, Apostle T.G. Thompson. The clock on the wall is telling me that it's time to pack my grip and make my getaway. <laughs> it's my prayer. It's my prayer that you have received this word, that you have been challenged by this word, that you have been changed by this word. I pray that you receive this word in power. I pray, I pray that you know the power of the Holy Ghost uh, and that you are yielding to the power of the Holy Ghost. I wanna give you an opportunity I want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus. I want to give you an opportunity glory to God. I want to give you an opportunity to know Jesus. You say you need the Holy Ghost. Pastor, I need the Holy Ghost. Yes, you do. You got to have it. So what I need you to do, what I need you to do, if you're not saved, I need you first, I need you first to connect with Jesus. I need you, I need you, listen to me carefully, I need you to accept him as Lord. I need you to acknowledge sin. Acknowledge that you're a sinner. Come on, we're all sinners. The Bible says, Romans uh, 6 and 23, says all have sinned. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God, right? So we, we're all sinners. We have to acknowledge that we're sinners, right? But the next step is to confess that which we believe, all right? And if you believe, watch this. The Bible says in John 3, 16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay? And so if you believe this, that Jesus came to die on a cross for your sins so that you would be reconciled back to God, have a relationship with God, that you could renounce the kingdom of darkness and embrace the kingdom of light. If you believe this, it's as simple as making the confession of what you believe in your heart. The Bible says in Romans 10, and if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For the heart man believes on the righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's very simple. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, here I am. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And I also acknowledge that you are Lord. And I want you to come into my life. Forgive me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I repent of all sin. I turn away from sin. I accept you as Lord of my life. Come into my heart. I want to live for you. Change me forever in Jesus' name. Now, as that simple, now you just lift your hands right there, right where you are if you prayed that prayer. 
and we decree and, and declare by faith. And we say unto you, my brother, my sister, receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost of God. Receive him into your life now in Jesus' name. And there may be something that's getting ready to happen in your body. You may begin to speak. You may, be, you may try to speak your own language. And your language begins to change. That's the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid. That's one of the initial evidences of, speak, of, of, of the Holy Spirit being in your life. That's an evidence that the Holy Spirit is in your life. And I pray today that you have received this. And that if you have received this, um, there are two things that we can do. Those that are on the Edgefield page, I want you to let us know. Let us know that you have received Jesus You've received the Holy Spirit into your life and send it to Edgefield Church uh, at gmail.com. Edgefield Church at gmail.com. All right? Send it there. Edgefield Church at gmail.com. Okay? If that is not you, if you are on Black Women Empowered, go to Black Women Empowered Journal. Black Women Empowered Journal.com. And let us know that you have received uh, uh, Jesus, you have received from God, all right? You have received the Holy Spirit, and you've been blessed by this message, all right? Uh, and uh, that, is, that is what we have for you today. Again, con congratulations to all of our um, 2020 graduates. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't give you an opportunity. Those that may be watching, that want to be a part of this fellowship, you want to join the Edgefield Church, you can also uh, submit that information to edgefieldchurch at gmail.com. All right? Edgefieldchurch at gmail.com. All right? So congratulations to all of uh, 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 the 2020 graduates, uh, high school and collegiate. We are so proud of you. Thank you for your tenacity and your strength, your endurance. The best is yet to come. We love you. Say it with me. I'm healed. I'm delivered. And I'm set free. And I'm walking in greater victory. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you Wednesday night at 7 p.m. God bless.